Today we're going to be looking at reducing the size of a mesh in Blender 2.9 with photogrammetry rocks. Remesh! We're going to take this and turn it into this. I love rocks, mate! Hello, today I'm going to be taking a model created in Meshroom. Um, it's well worth downloading Meshroom, it's a free photogrammetry program. That is, it takes a series of your images and creates a three-dimensional model from it. So it's incredible. Unfortunately, it does create incredibly detailed meshes, <clears throat> which are entirely unsuitable for game work. So if you're creating an asset for a game, it's going to be too high resolution. So um, we're going to be looking at taking a detailed model from Meshroom and breaking it down, making its typology, cleaning its typology up, making it so that it's easier to work with if you need to edit it later, uh, getting the textures all sorted, getting them baked in. So you'll end up with um, something which does look very similar to this high resolution mesh, but will be clean and fairly low poly. So without further ado, let's get this done. Okay, as you can see, I'm using Blender 2.90.1. Uh, that's my, that's the most recent version for me at this time. I'm just going to delete the default square there, which you get. Now I happen to have a plane in there, which I've dropped in as a new default, but that's for another tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by importing my um, photogrammetry model from, from Meshroom over to Blender. And I'm going to do that by going to File, Import and Wave Front OBJ. So if I click on that, uh, number five. Now, here is the folder which is created by Meshroom. What I need to do is double click on that and then look for texturing. Double click on that, then you have to go into that. And this is the file I'm after, texturedmesh.obj. So I'm going to click on import. And this should take anything from 10 seconds to a minute or so just to import, depending on its complexity. And here is my import. Now, as you can see, it's kind of at a funny angle at the moment. That's no problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit one on the keyboard on the um, on the numerical pad and then R on the keyboard and just spin my mouse around like that. I'm going to press G just to bring this up. And then I'm going to press one on my keyboard. Actually, that's OK. Normally I press R again and just rotate it, but I think that's pretty good. And now using the middle mouse button, I'm going to click and drag just to have a look at these rocks. Now I'm just going to move over from here to here to view the textures in place. Now this will take a second just for the textures to load up. And there we are. As you can see, very, very impressive. Meshroom will often do an incredible job. But if I go over to the, um, the mesh view, as you can see, these meshes in places are unbelievably dense and just, um, you, you can't work with that. There's not a lot you can do with such a mesh. So I'm going to go back to, I think I'll just go back to this mode now, just so I can see it without textures. Um, there's a few imperfections in here between the rocks. You can see there's something going on there. Not enough data obviously was caught, but that's not a problem because what I'm going to do 
is at some point I'm going to remodel this and we're going to project the texture and any other details back on to the remodeled, reworked version of this. So, okay, let's make a start on this. I always like to rename anything that I import. Uh, here, I'm going to call this one High Mesh. Maybe I'll join those together. And I'm going to hit seven on my numerical pad. Just move into position. And I'm going to hit the tab key to go into edit mode. Like thus. And I'm just going to click anywhere just to come out of just to deselect everything. And I'm going to go over to face mode up here. And then making sure that I have the X-ray switched on so that I can see all faces, even faces that are obscured behind other faces. I'm going to hit C on my keyboard using my middle mouse wheel, just expand that radius. And then I'm just going to click once to select all of my rocks. And I'm just going to right click to come out of C, out of that selection mode. And as you can see, I've selected a good amount of detail there. See all the rest of the stuff, I just want to ditch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to select and I'm going to invert my selection. And then I'm going to hit X on my keyboard and delete faces. There we have it. I'm going to hit tab again just to come out of edit mode. And I think I'll just take the X-ray toggle off there so we can see what's going on. And as you can see now, that is starting to shape up. Maybe have a quick look at it with its textures in place, just for the wow factor. That is looking pretty good. However, we still have this problem, don't we? Very, very dense mesh. So how do we get around this? Firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to keep this as a reference for later when I start applying the textures onto this. Because what we're going to do is we're going to run this model through another application called Instant Meshes, which is going to simplify the typology. That is, it's going to take this random, very dense, messy mesh and just make it so it looks as if it's been designed by hand, it's been created by hand. The typology is going to line up nicely. It's just going to be very neat and tidy and very easy to edit and great in computer games and animations and whatever you need it for. So we're going to retypologize. I don't know if that's a word, but it is now. We're going to retypologize these rocks, but we're then going to reapply the texture. You see, if I went into this now and I, I changed the typology, the existing texture is going to be lost. It's just going to turn black. It's not going to know where to map. So we need to take these steps. I also want to capture as much detail as possible so that when I reduce the detail of the mesh, the little bumps in the rocks here and the little cracks and the rough ground here is saved in another way. And I'm going to do that by saving all of that information to an image file called a normal map. So let's get to this. So there is our model. I'm just going to duplicate it and click. So now I have high mesh one and high mesh two. I'm just going to click on this little filter funnel type of icon up here. And I'm just going to switch these two on as well so I can really see what's going on. And with my other mesh, um, I'm just going to switch those off just by clicking and dragging over them or just clicking on each individual one. So I just have the one mesh because we're going to refer to this later. OK, so there is my mesh. I'm going to start by cleaning up some of the typology. As you can see, it's sort of gone a bit funny in the middle here. So I'm going to do this by clicking on the object, make sure it's selected and going over to sculpting. There we are. I like to hit the forward slash or the question mark key on my keyboard just to cut everything else out in the scene so I can just focus on the model. You see, there's a few areas here where the typology is not looking great. So I'm going to work on those. Firstly, there's that annoying thing there. I'm pretty sure that is not a part of the original rock. So I'm just going to use the smooth tool here 
perhaps bring its strength down to fairly low, maybe one point, sorry, 0 0.3 or something like that. Making sure I've switched off all of the symmetry settings. I'm just going to dab a little bit over that. Not too much, I don't want to flatten it all out. There we go, that's a bit better. And it might be worth just having a quick look over the model and seeing if there's any other areas where this is going on. So I don't want those to make it through to the final edit. And I think... I think that's looking a little better now, so it's a little cleaner. Okay, now to these areas here. Obviously there is a lack of typology going on. There is a lack of... Um, there's a lack of faces within this model, around this region here. Unlike here, where you've got a very dense mesh of faces, these are very big, so it's very sparse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose up here, I'm going to click on the Draw tool. I'm going to click on the Dino Typology option up here. And you have to then click on OK. It's kind of like a safeguard. And what this will do is it'll allow me to add new typology to this area here using the Draw tool. So if I click and drag now, or maybe just click and dab is is what I recommend. You don't have to do much, just a little click and dab. You'll notice that new typology is now appearing. Now if you want a bit more detail, just zoom in a tiny bit more and you'll find the typology is reactant to the zoom factor. The distance you are from the subject. So if I just dab over these, I'm going to increase the size of my uh, brush using the parenthesis keys on my keyboard. You can also right click and change the radius that way. So if I just dab a little around here, see it's looking a little messy now. What I could do is I could go to the smooth tool and just then dab a little over those areas that I've just worked. And you'll notice it just seems that more detail appears. It's not that detail is appearing, it's just that, or the typology is increasing, it's just that the, um, the typology that I'd clicked on had started to fragment, but it was just very difficult to see that without a little bit of perspective. Ah, okay, there we go, it's looking a little better. So again, just going over the model, dabbing with the draw tool, and then just a little dab or two with the smooth tool. Again, be subtle with this. Don't overdo it. If you overdo it, you're going to end up changing your rock into something that it's not. So let's just keep on working around this rock. Maybe I'll speed the rest of this process up a little. Right, I think that's looking a lot better. Um, there are a few bald spots due to um, er errors we had in the typology, but that's okay. If I really wanted to be um, uh, precise with this, I could always go through and just add a bit of detail myself using whichever method suits me. Uh, there are lots of ways of doing that. You can add clay strips, or you could you know, get a hold of a brush that would sort of add um, a little sort of rock-like typology, uh, whichever method suits you. But anyway, I'm going to leave that as it is. I think that is a lot better. The only thing I am tempted to do is just tighten up some of these areas here. And I could use the, um, the pinch tool just to close this gap a little bit. Again, I don't want to overdo this. I don't want to make this look a little out from what it was. Uh, that's probably, again, being subtle, nothing too outrageous. Yeah, I think that looks like it's a part of the rock anyway, so if I just smooth that bit out, just so it looks that way. Yeah, that's looking better-ish. 
Oh, I don't know, maybe just use a little cocktail of different tools here just to change the typology a little. Again, I want to be subtle. Uh, that'll do, that'll do. Right, okay, so there we go. Um, oh, a little bit I've missed down there. I'm just going to, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, just tap on those bits down there, this bit here, and then just smooth that out like us. Lovely. Right. Now I'm going to come out of sculpting back into layout mode. Now remember earlier that I duplicated this mesh um, because I was saying that it's, you know, if I start messing around with this mesh in sculpting or retypologizing, that's that word again, um, if I do that and there's a texture on there, it's going to have to remap it and it's going to make a mess. I'm going to show you this now. If I go to the texture view here, you'll see there are going to be plenty of missing faces where I've been working. So that looks pretty ugly. So we don't want that. We don't want that. And that is why I made sure that I had a backup. This is what we're going to grab the texture from. The texture is going to be applied from here over to here eventually. But before we do that, there's a few of the steps that I'm going to take. So, firstly, I'm going to go to my rather clean looking model now. I think I'll just go back to this mode here so we can see it. I'm going to take this model, I'm going to select it, making sure that it's all active up here. This is my, my high mesh. And I'm going to go to File and I'm going to export it as an Wavefront OBJ. Now, one important thing to do, which I keep on forgetting, I keep on forgetting even now, I've been doing this for a long time, but I still do this, limit to selection only, selected over here. If we don't do that, then it's going to export everything, including both meshes, and it's going to be a big file, and it's going to take a while to export. So just make sure you have that ticked. Um, as you can see, I've actually... I actually stopped the recording because I forgot. So anyway, export OBJ, give it a name, and twiddle your thumbs for a while. Once the export is complete, you'll see eventually your cursor will look like this. It'll leave the be a bunch of zeros. If I just click somewhere, you can see it goes back into the white arrow. Export done. It can take a few minutes. I'm now going to go to Instant Meshes, which is a brilliant program. It's free to download. Just Google Instant Meshes. Um, and I'm going to open my OBJ file. Rocks 5 Low OBJ. I'm going to click on Open. And again, it takes a few seconds for this to come through. Now, while it's doing that, back to Blender and just show you again how complex the mesh currently is. There is a lot of information in there. In fact, if I click on this drop down here and the viewpoint overlays um, and choose statistics, it'll actually tell me what this mesh is made up of if I go into edit mode and then press A to select all. Whoa, that's a big number. There's basically one point, let's call it 1.3 million faces in this model. So again, coming out of tab, again, out of edit mode, I'm going to go over to Instant Meshes, which has loaded up my model. Now this is quite simple. We have the model loaded. There are lots of little gizmos that you can play around with, but let's keep it simple in this tutorial. I'm going to, first of all, reduce the target vertex count and I usually like to go to sort of 1.1, 1.5, something like that. 1.3 is good. Uh, this will result in around about 2,000 or so faces. So from 1.3 million or whatever it was, down to 2,000. So quite a big saving. So I choose that. I make sure that I get the slider somewhere around that part. I then click on Solve. And Solve again. Just let that complete and then export mesh. 
And then from here, I click on Pure Quad Mesh, and I like to put smoothing iterations to one. And then watch this. This is the magic. Click on Extract Mesh. And just watch. There we are. As you can see, we now have clean or cleanish typology and very low poly as well. There's not a lot of information in there, but that's fine. I'm going to click on save. I think I'll actually take this to where it belongs as well. I'll go to new rocks. I'll go to five and I'll call this one about low poly dot OBJ. You don't have to do that, but there we are and click on save. And that's that. All I need to do now is go back to Blender. All I need to do now, I've got loads to do. OK, uh, File, Import, OBJ. And I'm going to go to where I have my rocks saved. Low poly. Import, let's take a second because it's quite low res. And there it is. All in place. Now it's on top of the high mesh. So if I just switch that off, just so we've got some um, bearing on what's going on here. There's our high mesh, which is a little bit messy. And there is our new low poly mesh. As you can see, it's incredibly low poly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, make sure low poly is selected or whatever it's called. It will take on the name of the file that you've saved you've exported from Instant Meshes. And I'm just going to tab into edit mode. And as you can see, there's all these strange blue lines. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and click on the edge select. Make sure everything's selected. Just press A. Everything should glow like this. And then right click with your mouse and clear sharp. So now that we've removed the sharp elements coming back into edit mode just worth right clicking just make sure it's on shade smooth which it usually is you can see there's not a lot of detail in there it's very messy now we could crank up the amount of geometry or typology i don't know which one's which by going to the modifier properties over here and add modifier let's go for subdivision surface and as you can see, if I just crank that up to two, it's looking a bit smoother, but even so, where is all that amazing detail gone? Well, we're going to bake the detail into this mesh via a normal map now. That is, we're going to take the detail from this here, this high mesh, all of this fine detail, and we're going to convert it into an image file, which is then going to be cast onto our low poly model. Now to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to split this screen here just by taking your mouse over here and clicking and dragging. And I'm going to change this view here into a uh, shader. I'm just going to press N to get rid of that. There we go. So we have the default principle BSDF and making sure that's selected. You see, I've got low poly selected. That's great. I'm going to shift A and S and just type in image and press return. There's our image. And I'm going to shift A, S, type in normal. And I'm going to choose normal map. And that's going to go between the two. And I'm going to link color to color and normal to normal. And this is going to be, as you can see at the moment, it's a bit weird. Don't worry. This is going to be the detail for this low poly model. I'm going to generate the texture by clicking on new. And I'm going to go for a 4K texture. Um, if I wanted to go for um, a 2K, I could just type in times two at the end there. 1024 times 2, of course, equals, sorry, 2048. Or I could do this. For a 4K, I could times it by 4. And there we go. There is the number 4096. 
this is the size of the texture file that's going to hold our normal information. Uh, I'm also going to give this a title. How about uh, Rock 5, because I've been creating a lot of them lately, Norm. There we go. And then just click on OK. It's always worth as well going to color space and changing that to non-color. The amount of issues I had in the past when I first started using Blender, I didn't realize that color space is critical for a seamless and tidy result with normal maps. So anyway, ah oh, yabba. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into edit mode with this low poly mesh selected and we're going to create a few seams. Now, the reason why we create seams is so that the texture, whether it's the normal map or the diffuse texture, that's the photographic side of things, we want to be able to get the best out of it. We don't want any areas that are smudged or blurred or stretched. We want it to wrap seamlessly around our model. So we're going to work out areas where the seams are. So, for instance, I would probably put a seam around the edge of each one of these rocks and then make a few splits in the seams on the sandy beach area and maybe a few splits along the tops of the rocks. So that it's like taking, you imagine taking a piece of paper and wanting to stick that paper to a three dimensional shape. Your best method would be to cut that paper into pieces and then glue it on. If you're trying to stick the whole sheet onto the model, there's going to be creases and stretches and rips and all sorts of other things. So this is why we make seams. Now, the way I'm going to do that is by making sure that I have the edge select tool selected. And I'm just going to hold down my shift and alt key. Deselect if you wish, just click elsewhere. Shift alt and click on one of these lines here just to sort of create a seam. Well, it's not a seam at the moment, it's just a selection, but that's OK. I don't really want that going up there, so I'm going to press C and middle mouse button click and just deselect those little bits there. I think for this as well, I'm going to go to the modifier tab and just switch off the visuals so I can see what I'm doing, because it can be rather distracting. I think also I'll turn the textures off. That's it. I can see exactly what I'm doing now. Oops, you can see there I've selected a bit of a, an edge there. That's it. That's good. And now I'm going to just shift alt select around the edge here. Think for this bit, I'm just going to use the K, which is the knife K and click, click, press enter. And then I'll carry on around. I don't like jagged finishes on these sort of things. Sometimes it goes a bit crazy like it has there. I don't really want that. I'm going to undo that. And I think again, I'm just going to K like that and then just select a few manually just to make sure I'm on in the right place. Yeah, maybe down here. Something like. Oops, I just did a shift alt but it goes too far sometimes. Again, I'll do a K just to bring that down. I won't do that too many times. Uh, about between there. You want to sort of head for the seams, really. Uh, the hidden areas. Underneath rocks, in, inside cracks and things like that. Oh, where is this going? Cool. OK, I think that is correct. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click and choose Mark Seam. And now they should turn a red color, probably a red or an orangey red color due to the fact that there's already some selected. And at this point, it makes it very obvious when certain bits aren't selected, like I've missed a bit here. I can just select it, right click, Mark Seam. Maybe I should just go through this. First, just making sure that everything is selected that should be selected. And you can see here the configuration I've got. I've cut the overall area into four. I've gone around underneath each object. And I've even put a little line through the top of each as well. In fact, I've put two on this one. So it just breaks it up nicely so that it can be easily 
wrapped and unwrapped. Talking of wrapping, I'm now going to go to my face select mode. I'm going to press control, sorry, just A on its own to select everything. I'm going to hit U on the keyboard and choose unwrapped. And what that will do is this, if I just go over to here and choose the UV editor, you can see that it's broken up my shape into nice pieces that I can now work with. So I can do things, uh, but you know, I like to move these around sometimes. I'll just select one, control L, and then I can just control, or so just G that on its own and R it, rotate it. Sometimes it's nice just to configure these a little differently. If you feel one's a bit too close to the other, it's nice to have a bit of space if possible. Control A, G, drag, control S. I want to get the most out of this. Use as much of the image area as possible because this is the edge of the image. This is the canvas of the image. And I want to be able to fill that. Not to the point where the these are getting too close to the edge. I don't want that. But uh, the larger these are, the more detail there's going to be in the final shot. So anyway, there we go. Everything's mapped now. Everything's been unwrapped. Excellent. All done on that side of things. Don't need to worry about this. Now, one thing I've neglected to do, despite the fact I've been a tutor of new media for the past 20 odd years, I still forget to save things. So let's do that now. I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to save as, and I'm going to save my entire project. Not in there. Rock five. I'll just call it rock five just to be very boring. Always worth doing a backup. There we go. So that's all now looking great. I'm just going to come out of edit mode. Um, right now, now the interesting bit. I'm going to split this window here because it's nice to have a, a view of the UV editor and the texture. And what I'm going to do is I'm first of all, I'm going to just highlight by clicking on it the normal image reference. There it is. The model we did a backup of earlier, we didn't get round to giving it a name. I'm just going to call this one texture. So we, we have three models at the moment. We have the texture model. We have the mesh model. That's the one where the ugly bits missing, but at least the typology is good. And we have the low res the low poly model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my high mesh model. And this is where I'm going to take the more normal map from. And I'm going to apply it to my low mesh model. So again, making sure you've got image selected on your low mesh, click on high mesh, hold down the control key and click on low poly. Do it in that order. Very, very important. So you first of all select your high resolution mesh, hold down the control key, click on the low resolution mesh in that order. So we're going to be baking the detail from high mesh over to low mesh. Next, I go over to render properties, making sure I have cycles selected. And if you've got GPU compute, even better. Now render, you can have this really low, like eight. I'm going to put it on eight for the sake of this. 16, no problem at all. Keep it low. Don't have to go too high. Max bounces, I would suggest two. Keep it to a minimum. Um, maybe even switch these two off under caustics, reflective, refractive. Um, going further down, let's have a look now. Here we go. Tiles. Make your tile size the same size as the image that you generated for your normal. And that will certainly speed up the rendering or the baking process. Keep on going down and then we'll find bake. Now, um, let's just get this done first. Let's click on selected to active under bake. And for extrusion, put point 0.1 in. I find that works well. Uh, bake type, go for normal, and that's pretty much it. I usually at this point just do a quick control S to save and then just click bake. Now this process can take a few seconds. If you haven't unwrapped, you'll get an error message. 
you do need to unwrap your mesh before baking. And that's the low poly mesh. You don't have to unwrap the high resolution mesh because that is effectively already unwrapped and textured. So we'll just fast forward a little while this bakes. And there we have it. Uh, not a lot going on at the moment. If I switch off the high mesh, can you see now, as if by magic, our low poly mesh now looks like a high poly mesh. See, if I put it into that mode, you can't see it. But if I go straight into texture mode, although it looks more like ice, you can see a lot of details coming through through the normal map. Now, just to make sure if this isn't working, make sure that you've collected color, connected color to color, normal to normal. Um, leave those settings as they are. Make sure non-color is selected. And you should see something like this. There's a few little errors going on there, but that's okay. They're things we can sort later. Success. All right. First things first. Let's go over to here. Let's go over to our UV um, editor. Click on image. See, there's a small asterisk there. That means that there's a, an alert telling you that you've got to save what you've just created. So under rock five, I'm just going to save this as rock five norm.png. Make sure you save it as a PNG as well. Save image. Good. One in the bag. One done. That's excellent. Now I'm going to leave that for the time being. I'll come to um, edit this later. Um, next thing to do is switch off my high mesh model. I'm going to go to my texture model now. Now remember, just a quick recap, that's the one which is actually pretty well textured, but there's a few little dodgy typologies going on there, but that's okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my low poly, make sure low poly is selected. Switch it on first, of course. Make sure it's selected just by clicking on it. You can see the orange boundary appears around it. And you can see there I've got my normal map in place. That's all looking good. I'm going to press Shift A, S, type in image and put in an image texture node connecting to base color, color to base color. And all of a sudden, my model I think it's quite impressive. It looks like it's been covered in tar or bitumen. Turns jet black because I've just applied a blank texture to it. So I'll just turn that back on so you can see it. I'm going to click on new and I'm going to type in here rock five text, text for texture, making sure it's about the same size, 1496, 1496. Great. Click on OK. I'm going to leave that on, on sRGB. That's fine because that's a photographic information image. Uh, and I'm going to bake an image this time. I'm going to bake the photographic texture from the high resolution to the low resolution. And I'm going to start by selecting my texture, making sure it's highlighted. And then I'm going to click on texture here, hold down control and then click on low poly. Draw less as well, just in case the machine crashes. Things like baking, you know, they can be quite intensive at times, so it's always worth saving because it can cause your computer to crash so or freeze. So that's all looking pretty good. All I need to do is change the bake type. Earlier I set it to normal. I'm now going to change that to diffuse. And I'm going to unselect those two. I just want color information. Not interested in about lighting, indirect or direct. All I want is color information from the texture itself. So it's very important you do that. And once I'm feeling comfortable, making sure that I select that in the correct order, it should look something like this, where the high resolution is sort of an orangey red and the low resolution is just sort of yellowy orange. I'm going to click on bake. See you in a while. OK, there we go. It's looking like a very poorly constructed pizza at the moment, but that's OK. I'm just going to go to image up here in my UV panel. And I'm going to save as rock5text.png. Sounds about right. Click on save. And I can now hide my texture object. So now I have the low poly. Wow. 
Look at that. Look at the difference. Okay, there is our mesh. And that's what it looks like when it's textured. Isn't that incredible? Look at that detail. But it's not there. Incredible. The power of normal maps. Unleash the power. Okay, so there we go. We have a pretty good looking model. There are a few things which are looking a bit dodgy, but that's okay. We're going to fix those straight away. What we're going to do now is again, save control S. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to texture paint and I'm just going to hit the question mark forward slash key on my keyboard just to sort of hone in on that. And I think I'll shrink that side. I don't really need it. Right, as you can see over here, we have on the in the inspector we have two modes of work. We have the normal map and we have the texture. And we can go in between those. If I start off with the normal map, what I'm gonna do is just have a look, quick inspection. You can see there are a few weird things happening here, these oranges and greens and or what have you and yellows. It's all looking a bit strange. So I'm going to get rid of those, and the easiest way of doing that is by using the clone tool over here. If you right click and just change the radius size of your brush to something like that, um, I'm going to make sure strength is on full and I'm going to hold down my control key and click somewhere where the texture looks right and apply it to where the texture looks wrong. So I want to replace this area here with texture like this. So hold down the control key, click, and then paint. And as you can see, I've literally painted that information from there over to there. And again, I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to go underneath here because this looks a bit ropey, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks a bit better. I think there's a bit going on there. There's a bit of strange geometry there. Never mind. Okay, and I'm just going to look for any seams as well. Can you see these seams? They don't always come out right. So I'm going to just go over them. I'm going to be very gentle. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to lose a lot of good detail that's already there. I'm just going to go over anything which looks a bit suspect. Um, there's a seam there as well. Maybe just a few little dabs there just to break up that line. Um, and again, I think I'll have to fast forward for this, but you get the idea. Control, choose a targeted area and click to paint. Right, okay, I think that's actually looking pretty good. I think I've got all of the seams out. Who knows, there may be one or two lurking around, but that looks pretty smooth. So it's always worth taking your time on this. You know, if you want this model to be, uh, if you want to be able to sell it online or, or use it in a game, it's well worth just making sure that it's of optimal quality. Okay, I think that's looking perfect. Click on save all images and what it will do is it'll, um, it'll save all of the image. Oh, actually there is a bit there. Look at that. Sneaky, 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 sneaky. How did that get past me? Ah, there we go. Yeah, just click on save all images and it will save your normal map, all of the changes that you've made to it. And now you have one bespoke, perfectly in tuned, seamless, normal texture. Now that is impressive. That is good. OK, I'm going to go over to Rock Texture now, the Rock 5 Texture. And again, just looking around for anything which isn't quite right. I don't think this is going to take me as long to do, but um, I think I'll just speed this up a little. OK, I think that's looking a lot better. There's some difficult bits around here where I feel that that should be a lot darker. So what I'm going to do for those areas is I feel that there should be a lot of grime and stuff building up in there, a lot of dirt. Um, I'm going to just paint in some shade. Sounds extreme, doesn't it? And it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paintbrush tool over here. Uh, I'm going to choose black just by dragging this all the way down to here. And then I'm going to have a look at this area here. I'll probably just go for darken. You might want to have a play around with the blending mode just to see which one gives the best result. I'm going to bring the strength right down uh, and just slowly build up the effect that I'm after. 
um, just to kind of darken that area. I don't want to just wipe out information. But oh, let's have a look now. This is quite good for just producing highlights and lowlights in your texture. That's looking a bit better already. Maybe this bit here, just a little bit of a hint of something there. Oh, hey, yeah, missed a bit there. Okay, stamp tool, control, always missing a bit. Right, okay, back to the paintbrush, and I'm just going to just darken this bit here as well. Anything on the other side there? Now that's looking pretty decent. Good, good, good. I think we have a texture. Okay, save all images. Now, let's go back to layout and see what it's looking like now. Oh wow, look at that. That's looking pretty decent. That really is looking good. A few little things that I feel like at liberty to do now. I couldn't do this earlier, but I really want to close that gap. Um, I didn't want to mess too much with, with the typology earlier. But now that everything's in place, I feel like I can. So I'm going to choose, whoops, choose the right tool to start off with, the pinch. Just close that gap a little bit, just make it a little tighter. So that it looks less forced. Yeah. Certainly better than it was, isn't it? I don't want to go overboard with it though. And there was another bit that was bugging me. I think this bit here just looks wrong, doesn't it? Uh, maybe just a little bit of smoothing there. See, so we can get away with smoothing now because the normal map is going to retain a lot of information. So going back to layout mode. Oh, look at that. What do you think? Looks a little bit stretched there. Maybe I've overdone it, but you get the point. OK, that's looking pretty good. Uh, I think I'll put this back on now. If I go back to my modifiers tab and just switch back on my subdivision, just so I could see as much detail as possible. That is looking pretty decent. And remember all of this from that. Look at that. Low detail poly mesh, high detail result. Now I'm sure there are many ways of doing this. I'm not saying this is the only way. This is the method that I use. If you feel that you have a better method that's easier to follow and quick and easy uh, to apply, please do leave a message in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching. Please like and or subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell for new content when it goes live or visit my website shortfusecreative.co.uk. Don't forget to like and share this video. Okay, I can be a bit over the top. My apologies. See you next time.